voetbal neemt een hele grote plaats in mijn leven. Ik coach ook nog, dus ik ben eigenlijk... Uh, iedere dag heb ik wel met voetbal te maken. Alles valt en staat bij de felheid en bij de wil om te winnen. Als je niet wil winnen, wordt het helemaal niks. Dus het gaat erom dat je de jongens laat voelen, want die lopen hier alsof ze Jezus zijn. Maar we gaan de jongens even laten zien dat wij hun helemaal op zoek gaan spelen. En zo niet, dan gaan we keihard werken. Er zijn toch niet veel gekwalificeerde vrouwen en mannen die uh, zich bezighouden met het damesvoetbal. Ik heb zoiets van, nou, ik, uh, ik ben gekwalificeerd en ik denk dat ik wel wat te bieden heb als trainer bij die meisjes. En uh, in de toekomst misschien dames. Dus laat ik me daar dan ook mee bezighouden, want die hebben het heel hard nodig. Serena and I, we met in college in 1989 to North Carolina. We both were uh, freshmen going into the University of North Carolina. So we were probably 17, 18 years old. I went in with Mia Hamm, Serena Wegman. Carla Overbeck was our a senior. Tracy Bates was a senior. She was on the 91 World Cup team. Shannon Higgins was a senior. She was on the 91 World Cup team. I think that year, we might have been undefeated. So it was a rock star team. It was awesome. And Serena added so much. She was probably my size, worked hard, and you tell that she was competitive, led by example, but then, you know, spoke when, when she was felt the need to and, and helped lead the team. She had a good balance of leadership as well as just being a, a young player. She definitely knew the game, I would say more so than a lot of our Amer American players. She was a little playmaker, so fun to play with. She spent one year at North Carolina with us. I wish she would have spent all four. It was one of those things where you were like bummed that she's not coming back, but then you still appreciated that you had the time with her. When you talk about Toledo, you're talking about women football and men's football in one breath. We had it, we have it now, and we will have it in the future. I think we are proud of women football, and I think it means a lot for the community of our village, Sassenheim. Women football started in Holland, started here. About 40, 45 years ago, we won lots of titles, so we were one of the best clubs in Holland in women football. Still speak about Serena Wigman, and we all know even the young people that she started her career as a manager here and, a pl and as a player. So we're still proud about uh, Sarina. I hope and think she will never forget it. Well, I played uh, several years uh, with uh, Sarina. She was uh, my uh, team captain here uh, by uh, Terleda. She's a very <laughs> ambitious and motivated uh, person. So that's what she, uh, she brought to us. Uh, but she's also a very, very nice and uh, lady who's always uh, interested in you. She was not really very fast. Uh, but she had a very good uh, technical insight uh, at the field and uh, she was always pushing us forward. Yeah? Like uh, she wanted to play the offense and not the defense and I was a defender so she really uh, had some uh, several remarks uh, against me. Uh, but she was always very pushy to go forward, we need to score the goal there and not uh, backwards. I think she actually was uh, the, the coach. Uh, we had a coach on the bench and we had Serena and when you had to choose, it was always to really at least to her. Most of us were really, really ambitious and motivated to succeed. And Terleid is a very, very fine uh, club who's, uh, I think, very emancipated in, uh, in football. So we got all the chances here to, to, uh, to, to develop ourselves. And uh, well, there was a success. Three times uh, championship, uh, national uh, uh, trophy. My name is Ted Bruggeling. I'm a PE teacher at the Sekbrew College in The Hague. I've been working for seven, eight years with Serena Wiegman. Afterwards, we've been starting a group for the girls who perform at the highest level in the Dutch soccer. We wanted the women's soccer to be more professional. So we arranged for the, the Dutch girls from 12, 13, 14, 15 years to make extra training hours. And that's how we run the program. Serena, she was teaching all the students without being a teacher. Everybody had to follow her rules. When someone stands before a group and people always listen to them, they don't have to do anything, but they listen. And Serena was one of those, when she went out school, she was still a soccer player. 
So we attended her 100th match in the, the Dutch ladies team. She was celebrated by Louis van Gaal. We went there with a lot of students and it's, it was nice to see that for the students, she was just a PE teacher and not a Dutch uh, soccer player with a uh, lot of uh, games and matches for the Netherlands. I think all the great examples in the, the Dutch trainers are like Rinus Michels, Louis van Gaal. They're all PE teachers. So I think a PE teacher can always do that something extra to a training, a training method that will challenge the soccer players to obtain a higher level than they would normally obtain only practicing soccer with a former soccer player. We always keep in touch. She's still the same Serena. There's nothing different from her. The team was falling apart a bit and I think it was the right time uh, for Serena to uh, step at front and to become uh, the coach. Serena is an authority, then as a player and, and then as a coach. You need to have some distance because well, you're in a new role, so I think that's, well, that's an adjustment. As a person, I don't think she really changed a lot, no, no. I still see the fire in her eyes, the good choices. Well, she's very brave. She's, uh, I think she can make some uh, difficult choices. Those are all qualities you need to have in such a responsible role. My role at the club in 2006 was member of the supervisory board of Ede Den Haag. I proposed in that time the board to start with women football. Serena Riegman was at that moment a successful trainer coach of the amateur club Telede. She was a successful international player with more than 100 caps. So that was one point for me and she was an excellent school teacher with good skills. And also she played uh, football and training with the youngsters of uh, Adelaar men of 18 years old, when she was 21. So she was not only good, good involved with football, but also good involved with Adelaar Haag. There was a good click between us in the, in the beginning, and we uh, talk uh, with each other about how, how do we do with uh, the start with uh, new players, where they come from. So that was the first selection we have for the start of women football. So we take about six or seven players from Toledo and then we have to look in, 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 in the region of The Hague. Sarina was actually my first uh, senior coach in a senior women's uh, game. I remember that I could decide between two different clubs and had two conversations with the manager, one at Utrecht, one at Den Haag. Um, and she just uh, straight away made me feel like she valued me as a, a player and as a person. Um, and yeah, well, it wasn't a hard decision for me to make, uh, even though it meant uh, traveling up and down from Amsterdam. The first season in 2007, we ended on place four. And then the next three leagues in the years after, three times on the second place. But the fifth year in 2012, we become champion. And we won uh, the cup in this stadium for uh, 5,000 uh, spectators. We just you know, scraped wins, even when we didn't play well, that's always a good sign. Um, but the majority of the games we just really uh, yeah, played some good football. So it was a joy for me to play as well in the midfield um, with other midfielders around me. There's a lot of rotation and it felt like we were quite hard to, uh, to play against. And that mentality just uh, yeah, kept us going and uh, kept us the wins. It was a fantastic year. You only lose in 18 matches, only, only one match. So we were very strong in that year and we have to take part to the Women's Champions League. I would say that she's very clear in her uh, communication and in her tactics. 
So I knew uh, what was expected of me. She always sticks to a certain game plan, but also like the whole environment was enjoyable, especially at club level. You have quite a big squad, but only 11 can play week in, week out. So I remember that was tough uh, at times for the players who didn't, um, yeah, didn't play that week. But I feel like she um, at least um, yeah, tried to keep everyone uh, together. Um, so I would say maybe that togetherness was what the reason that got us the, the two uh, trophies that year. Very good players and uh, with, she with her staff was not only a trainer, not only a coach, she was also later a mother for the team. They had been building towards this moment for a long time uh, and it felt almost like the crown on the work of, uh, of Sarina and the whole club. Um, it was just a, a little bit of a shame that the year after it sort of uh, like a lot of players left, uh, as did I, um, because both Ajax and PSV uh, started women's teams. So it sort of yeah, fell apart a little bit, but uh, credit to the club that they, uh, that they still have, very, uh, have a very competitive team in the, in the highest league. I received a telephone call, so the technical manager of the Dutch Football Association phoned me and asked me, Robert, is your trainer, Serena Wiegman, available? I know that she is very popular there, so that's not a problem if you contact her. We owed her a lot of thanks and granted her the switch to the KVB. After seven years coaching our club, she deserved to go to a higher level. I'm still proud of her. I hope she, she, will, uh, she has Ado in her heart still. Only football, 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 and that 24 hours a day. So that was the first impression. Street fighter, loving the game. I think I give her the space to uh, to, to develop. Also with uh, the training courses, the licenses she has, she has to reach uh, to give some games or some trainings to to uh, to be the coach. I think she used the time then when I was the head coach to uh, to develop and to be ready for for her job. For us it was very important to develop the way of attacking. The players uh, know, I think, a good way to defend. I think her specialty was more a little bit on uh, defense and the back because that was her own position also when she played football. And I was a little bit more an attacking midfielder, so that was my quality. She's streetwise, uh, she knows the way uh, they play, she knows football, uh, she loves football, she do everything for it. But can you ask more for? from a person, then give everything and then reach such nice goals. They gave a lot of self-confidence, I think, uh, to, win, <laughs> to win the European Cup and also be, become second uh, at the World Cup. I think yeah, that's, that's uh, unbelievable. In Holland, it's uh, common that for the pro license, you need to find a club where you can uh, do your internship and then you join that club for one, two or three days a week. And um, uh, she asked me to join Sparta Rotterdam at that time. And I asked her to write a summary why she wanted to join us, what she wanted to learn, etc., etc. Her view at football was just as we have and when she came in uh, she was uh, directly a, a team member I don't want anyone to do the internship and just look over our shoulders so we just fitted her in in, in all the exercises we did you know, and every day uh, she was with us she was just uh, as I said a member of the team in, in every way you can you can find uh, tactical things technical things uh, when we had meetings about a game or, or, or a training session or what is necessary in the coming week. Is it more tactics or more uh, the attitude of the players? Uh, she, she fitted in in every type of conversation we had and every type of training we had. Open to feedback, also very open to give feedback to us. One and a half season later, we had an open space in, uh, in our second team. And the second team was all, uh, always very related to the first team. And we missed one assistant coach and we asked her back. And, uh, and that's what she did. And 
with that act, she was uh, really the, the first female coach in, uh, in the men's professional soccer in Holland. For me, it was absolutely necessary to change the manager. During my stay at the KNVB, uh, I, I met Serena, had some talks with her, and I was convinced at that time that she could be more successful than Aya van der Laan. And then we had a meeting with the Players' Council, and they convinced me, but also another director of the KNVB, Jan Dirk van der Zee, that she was the person to do the job. And the staff was already there and she knew all staff members very well. So every, all the good things came together at, at, at that time. If you look at her background, she is a physical education teacher, like Rinus Michels, like Louis van Gaal, like Guus Hiddink. And she comes from a, a city like The Haag with top uh, coaches like Martin Jol and Dick Advocaat. So, for me, there was a kind of base that she was quite all right to have the uh, uh, abilities to do the, to do the job. In addition to that, uh, she had a mission as well, because as a former player in Holland, she was kept 104 times. And she knows how difficult it was to get recognition, get appreciation and rewarding for women's football in, in, in Holland. Those things bringing together, I think she was the, the ideal person to start a job. For us, it, she was number one, but we had to make sure that the players were supporting the, her, her as well. So they did after the meeting. But a lot of uh, journalists wanted back Vera Pau. And Vera Pau she is like Serena, also one of the, the icons in, 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 in Dutch uh, women's football. But we thought we need to give Serena a chance because of all the things I just mentioned. We had a meeting together. She knew me already because I was there. She thought, okay, well, he can help us with his, his experience, with his knowledge about football. And in the beginning, I had to get used to it because my role was totally different. And normally, I was the boss. I said, you have to do that, that, that. And I did it for 40 years and all, on, on all kinds of levels. And now I was a little bit looking at it. And some things say, okay, I have to go in. And sometimes I have to go out. If you talk, with Serena, she always had a very strong opinion about, uh, about football. And she also was able to make it clear towards the players. Not just her vision how to play, like tactics, but also she expects the attitude of players and also the behavior of players. She can listen very well, she has a good idea about football and she is always honest. We were sitting on the bench together in the beginning and she was shouting sometimes and I was shouting sometimes. And my voice is much louder than her voice. So then she came to me after the game and said, Foppe, it's not, not, not okay that we are sitting together because you are shouting sometimes and I'm shouting sometimes and that is not okay. She's never talking about your back. She's talking straight to you. She has a real good attitude. And you uh, are involved in what she thinks and what she's doing, then uh, you have a good chance to go forward. We hoped for a semi-final because it was on hold so. But we never ever had expected to reach the final. From the beginning it was, it's, the Dutch is 4-3-3, three, three, yeah? there's no discussion. What was, was the right player on the right place. And that's always difficult. Huh? You, can, you have a, a system, but the system has to compare with, with, the, with, the, with the players you have. No, and that was, it took a little bit of time. And then I thought, okay, they have a good chance.
It was like one big dream. It was like a fairy tale. The last came in Enschede. I've been crying of happiness. They had the same uh, uh, kennel uh, uh, parade as we had in Amsterdam and they had in, in, in Utrecht. And I was ever so proud of uh, Serena with her staff and the players, of course. And it was just the right push at that moment for, uh, for Dutch women football. It's a great moment. You never forget it. And next day we went to Utrecht and uh, uh, a tour in the, in, in the boats and the, in the canals. Oh, that was amazing. That's a world-class team and a world-class situation I'm in. I'm very happy and honored that I can be part of that and I can bring my experience and knowledge to the team. I definitely thought she was not going to swap the Netherlands um, for England and I also think there was a mutual respect being at your home country that you're manager of for many certainly young girls and women it's your dream. And she had just won a European Championships with her home country. Can't get much better than that. So. I always, I think I ha always had a high level of respect for her, but at the same time wanted to offer an opportunity to have a conversation around a potential role that was, or vacancy that was coming out. So, yeah, I think it was definitely treading cautiously, not to kind of overstep the respect mark for both federations, but ultimately didn't want to miss out um, on having that conversation. Serena has a vision that, um, and a way about her, um, her personality, her leadership, a style of play that matches what we wanted to do at the English FA. That was quite an easy win for all her leadership characteristics, her um, desire to grow the game, not just she's a national coach and the influence that comes with that um, and the impact that they can have on the rest of the youth development teams within the pathway inspiring female coaches, the participants and the power of a home tournament was unbelievable. And she lived that with the Netherlands too um, and was hugely successful. So um, yeah, already very early on, um, she was someone that definitely was of interest. The games that we have in World Cup qualifiers um, are not always going to provide the test that's needed. The Arnold Clark tournament and cup gave us opportunity to pitch ourselves um, against that level of opposition. So yes, some of the results are what you would anticipate and expect, but ultimately it's about the performances. And I think how Serena and the team are trying to drive our identity on the pitch and how we want to play the game is refreshing to see. And I think clear for players to they're expressing themselves, they're positive you know, in, on the pitch. And I think that's, again, credit to what she's trying to develop over a period of time. What do you think the biggest change has been so far under her? I think the empowerment of people and individuals, um, driving a culture which is about performing at your best, a culture and an environment that people can excel. People are genuinely happy, they want to be here. They want to play, they want to work in the environment. Um, absolute clarity on what everyone's roles are, what their jobs are, on the pitch, off the pitch, staff and players. But really kind of bringing that people element to it. You know, this is about high performance, top end sport, but it's about doing it in the right way. She has this aura about her where she knows what she's talking about, which is obviously great, especially in the manager. But you want to impress her and you want to, you want to do the things that she's asking you to do because you believe in it. To keep that is really valuable because it means that you're constantly striving for more. I have no doubt in my mind that the team will be as prepared as they can be come the 6th of July. I think that for everything that Serena's done since coming in last um, autumn now, we'll provide the players and staff with the platform to go and be the best they can within, within the, the tournament alongside many other great teams. So that gives us comfort and reassurance that we'll be as prepared as we can be.